One of the big questions that hangs over the UFO community is the so-called Fermi paradox. If there's so much potential for intelligent life in the universe, why haven't we heard from anybody? Well, one explanation is that the alien visitors are like zoologists trying to study rare species in the wild. They go to great lengths to go unnoticed so they can observe without disturbing their subject. But now that we've developed high-tech reconnaissance cameras, it may be harder for them to stay hidden. Which brings us to our next video. It's November 2014, and a Chilean Navy helicopter is on routine patrol near the capital, Santiago. The crew is testing out a forward-looking infrared or FLIR camera. Something catches the technician's eye. And when he points his camera, this is what he captures. Two large overlapping orbs. Check it out. They're moving in unison. Maybe they're even connected. So we see here this is done in infrared. Everything that's white is cooler, and everything that is in black is much warmer or hotter, giving off a lot of heat. Based on the thermal camera's readout, the object is hotter than everything else in the frame. And the Navy crew says the object's speed matches their own 130 knots. Then look, the objects seem to release a plume of some sort, not once, but twice. For forensic investigator Chase Klotsky, the plumes are an intriguing sight. I've just never seen anything like this before. And the plume, like, what is that? It's so unusual. Is it gas? Is it vapor? One thing Klotsky is certain about, the video is not a hoax. This case is absolutely the real deal. Chile actually openly investigates their UFOs. So when the Chilean government comes out and says, this is something that has the characteristics of a UAP, you can take it to the bank. The Chilean government studied this video for two years before releasing it to the public. And this UAP, or Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, didn't just look strange. We have reports from the Chilean Navy that this aircraft did not appear on its radar system. We also have a report that they did try to communicate with this aircraft, but it never responded back, which is a bit of a mystery. The Chilean camera could switch between optical and infrared settings. For an unexplained reason, the plume that shows up as hot in the infrared doesn't appear at all in the optical viewer. To cut through all of these mysteries, we turn the footage over to our experts. Tim McMillan considers whether it might have been a hostile craft trying to sneak into Chilean airspace. Obviously, the drone theory is one that everyone has to examine. This was filmed in 2014. Drone technologies were not nearly as advanced as they are today, and they weren't as frequent, even with the militaries of the world. And so there's not really any shape that would be consistent with what you would expect to see from a drone. Balloons are also mistaken for UFOs quite often, so astronomer and video effects designer Mark D'Antonio looks at that possibility. Certainly balloons do go that high and certainly balloons do travel slowly, but they generally don't show hot spots like this. I do not believe this is a balloon. The key could be those strange plumes. D'Antonio thinks the object is moving through pockets of moist air. I have watched contrails start and stop and make dashes in the sky. I think this is a contrail from a commercial jet. Two hot spots, two trails. Others think the plumes could be a plane dumping fuel. But wouldn't the two-year investigation have tracked that plane down? And the object appears to be headed towards Santiago, a city of over 4 million people. Aircraft, when they're in trouble, will tend to go out to the ocean to be able to dump their fuel. And they do that in non-populated areas. And if you look at the settings on the West Cam camera, it was looking at an object that was fairly straight ahead, which means that the object was equivalent to its altitude, which puts it at relatively low. 4,000 feet is nothing in terms of its altitude. Airplanes only form contrails of ice above 30,000 feet. Hoffman sees why the Chilean authorities still view this video as unexplained. The Chilean video uh, has an object that, that has all the appearances of being something that we would think of as being an aircraft, but we just don't know for sure. There are still no clear explanations for why radar failed to detect this object or why the plume doesn't show up in the optical viewer. 
But it's worth pointing out that the U.S. Navy only started seeing UAPs, like the famous Tic Tac, when it installed its Aegis radar systems, which the Chileans didn't have. So, no one can identify what the Chilean Navy caught on video. So we're going to call this a real UFO. We've investigated dozens of UFO encounters, but few seem to pose an immediate threat to the eyewitnesses. Well, what you're about to see, or really hear, will change that, because something came within feet of taking out a passenger plane. February 21st, 2021. American Airlines Flight 2292 is heading from Cincinnati to Phoenix. Everything seems normal as it cruises at 36,000 feet over northeastern New Mexico, until ground control gets this message from the pilot. Have any targets up here? We just had something go right over the top of us that, I hate to say this, looked like a long cylindrical object. It almost looked like a cruise missile type of thing moving really fast that went right over the top of us. Whatever blasts over the top of their aircraft, it's hurtling along at 400 knots. We built this animation based on the pilot's description of the object. Radio scanner Steve Douglas recorded the exchange. Looked like a long cylindrical object. It almost looked like a cruise missile. This is one of those where you know you have recorded something important. Adding to the mystery, a cruise missile-like object should have been detected, but it wasn't. Radar is designed to scan for objects in the sky that may not necessarily have a transponder. So whatever object flew over this aircraft was not giving off a transponder signal, nor was it appearing on radar. Of course, New Mexico is famous for the 1947 Roswell incident. Rich Hoffman thinks Flight 2292's route over New Mexico is key, but not necessarily because of aliens. You've got White Sands Proving Ground. You've got uh, a number of other test sites. Could it be some kind of stealth missile? And if so, shouldn't we all be worried it was so close to a plane? Secret aircraft have flown over New Mexico since the early tests of the U-2 spy plane in 1955. But could this undetectable flying cylinder really be a secret weapon system or a UFO? And what kind of aviation security risk does it pose? Let's ask our experts. Aviation expert Tim McMillan chased down his sources in the federal government, pressing for answers. I reached out to the FBI. They told me that they were aware of it and were looking into it, but that they declined to comment any further. The director of public affairs at New Mexico's White Sands Missile Range said no tests were conducted that day. But can we take that at face value? If it almost looked like a cruise missile, it means that it didn't have any wings. It's possible that there was some kind of military test gone awry. But it's hard to imagine even the worst misfire of a cruise missile sending it into a busy flight corridor at the same altitude as a passenger plane, all in broad daylight. And McMillan thinks it sounds more like another famous object spotted almost 17 years ago. This cylindrical shape is also something that we've heard in other UFO reports. The Tic Tac, or oval shape, was very famously encountered by the Navy pilots in 2004. Missile, drone, or Tic Tac? We may never know. The investigation appears to be ongoing. So for now, we're going to call this case a genuine UFO. We all keep our phones safely stowed away when driving, right? Well, that rule doesn't apply if you're flying on autopilot. And lucky for us, one pilot had his hands free and his phone ready to capture a one-of-a-kind video. Prepare for takeoff. February 2020, an Airbus A320 is on a routine flight soaring over Medellin, Colombia. Little does the captain know he's about to find out he's sharing the friendly skies. The pilot does us the favor of showing his altimeter, and we can see that he's flying uh, around 30,000 feet in altitude. The pilot then points his camera phone out of the cockpit window and watch this as he zooms in. A metallic-looking object, a polyhedron of some sort, whizzes by in a straight line. We slow it down and zoom in further. You can see it kind of looks like a cube. It has uh, these kind of little points that stick out. It does seem to be darker in color and not um, like a bright, shining balloon. Whatever this is, it definitely shouldn't be there. 
Now, it's hard to judge this object's size without knowing how far away it is, but scientist Amy Eskridge estimates it's 10 to 15 feet in diameter. One theory is that if we were visited by another civilization, they might send probes ahead of when they actually come. And consider this. A similar object was spotted by an F-A-18 fighter pilot in 2018 at an altitude of 35,000 feet. It still hasn't been identified, and its structure, unlike any known airframe, lends credence to the alien probe theory. They might want to collect data, maybe do a little surveillance, a little monitoring before they actually show up. In the U.S., we associate Medellin, Colombia with drug cartels. But in South America, the city is known for UFO sightings. In fact, after UFOs were spotted over a soccer stadium and above a forest, the city earned the title the New Roswell. So we're turning to our experts to see if they can tell us what's going on. I've analyzed several videos in depth of UFOs and UAPs over the course of my career. And the way that it's traveling on screen in the area of the clouds does appear to be consistent with recordings that I have deemed authentic. So while Primo can't find anything technically wrong with the video, something just doesn't look right to him. What caught my eye is when the camera's panning up to the skyline, the operator instinctively zooms in, almost like he's expecting this object as it's coming towards the airplane. This was peculiar to me. So the feel of the video upon visual analysis feels staged. But Primo thinks it's possible the pilot was just plain lucky to zoom in right as the object flies past the plane. MJ Benias agrees. Pilots are the people who work in the sky and operate in it, so they're going to have the best view of any potential UFOs around them. We turn this video over to our aviation expert, Tim McMillan. He thinks whatever was shot over Medellin is too slow to be any kind of plane or missile, and it looks nothing like a drone. Initially, when it starts coming, I thought uh, it's probably a balloon. Regular helium balloons rarely make it to this altitude. When they get this high, the helium expands and the balloon pops. But solar balloons are different. Used as toys or for research, they're usually made from dark material to absorb the sun's heat. They rise as the air inside warms and expands. They've gone as high as 46,000 feet, but in general, when they hit the cooler air up high, they start to lose shape and altitude. It's just too cold for them to stay aloft. It almost seems to have a, an odd uh, cube-like shape. That uh, is exactly what the Navy pilots have reported seeing off the east coast of the United States. They're currently part of the unidentified aerial phenomena that's being investigated by the Department of Defense. I don't have a good explanation. So, assuming it's not a hoax, it's certainly not a drone or a known aircraft. It's possibly a balloon. I mean, when you look at that speed, your mind goes there. But it's extremely rare for a solar balloon to reach this altitude. By process of elimination, we'll go with genuine UFO. So humans might not be the only pilots up in the sky. Antarctica is the coldest place on Earth, containing 90% of the planet's ice. It looks almost like an alien planet, and there are some who think it's hiding proof of aliens themselves. In October of 2020, a sharp-eyed investigator scanned satellite images of Antarctica and comes across a site that stops author Brad Olson in his digital tracks. It's a metallic-looking object half covered in ice, and Olson's sure he knows what it is. There's a perfectly round saucer on Antarctica. Look closer. It sure seems to be a raised disk casting a shadow onto the ice. Olsen thinks that as the ice melts, an alien spacecraft has emerged from where it was left thousands of years ago. But what alien would park their ride in such a hostile place? Antarctica and Mars are both extremely sterile environments. If I were a Martian and I wanted to choose a place on Earth to live, Antarctica, it'd be the closest thing to home I could find. George Haas, chairman of the Cydonia Institute, thinks Antarctica was much more than a Martian rest stop. He believes Earth and Mars were twin cradles of an interplanetary civilization. Contrary to mainstream science, he claims that this pyramid-like structure and this human face are not natural Martian formations. I believe the structures that we're finding on Mars were either built by an indigenous Martian culture, or they possibly could have been done by us a long, long time ago. 
Which brings us back to the saucer. Olsen thinks it could be how the ancients commuted between the two planets. Could it be that this is a shuttle to go back and forth to Mars with some of the presumed bases that exist on the red planet? Antarctica was once on the equator, and plants and dinosaurs thrive there. It seems fantastical, but the fossil record proves it's true. And now some believe we're on the verge of a similar revelation about the continent's connection to Mars. The only way to separate fact from theory is to turn to our experts. Science writer and forensic video analyst Mick West takes a 3D look at Olsen's downed UFO. I tried orbiting around the image to see what it looks like from different angles. The perception of it kind of changes. And now instead of it looking like a disc, it kind of looks like a little lake of water. And I think what we're seeing here is an example of what's called uh, the crater illusion. The human brain has evolved over millions of years into expecting that light comes from above. So our brains automatically interpret this image as being a raised up disc and they interpret the other image from 180 degrees as being a depression. West is certain about the crater illusion, but NASA's Bob Anderson is more open-minded about the strange formations on Mars. He thinks they were likely created by erosion and other natural causes, but he's keeping an open mind until we can inspect them in person. What we should do is go study them, and I'll give you a perfect example on Mars. We looked at imagery for a long time and said, well, Mars is a dead planet. It had no water. It had nothing. And now we know that Mars had an ocean that lasted early in the 4 billion year mark. And so the ideas and the hypotheses are constantly changing. Our verdict? We think West is probably right that the saucer is an optical illusion. But just as Bob Anderson thinks the formations on Mars are worth investigating, George Haas says there should be an Antarctic expedition to examine the saucer-like shape. And on that, we can agree. Since Voyager 1 launched in 1977, humans have been probing space looking for signs of intelligent life. There's been no confirmation yet that an alien species is doing the same, looking for us. But what if they've been sending probes our way this whole time, and we've just been misreading the messages? It's a clear evening in Gainesville, Florida, and motorist Chad Zetrauer is driving along Newberry Road when his dash cam captures something that makes him pump the brakes. It's not on the road, it's in the sky. A blue orb shoots overhead. What the f was that? Let's slow that down. Whatever fell from the sky appears to flash or explode, but no pieces or impact crater are discovered. When the video goes viral, it has many thinking UFO. One scientific explanation is that what Chad filmed was simply a meteor. But there's a whole new theory gaining traction that some rocks from space are UFOs. I can't really say it's not of alien origin because I really never get a good enough look at it. In October of 2017, observers spotted an object racing around the sun that didn't have a tail like a comet and was on such a strange trajectory they realized it had to be from another solar system. They named it Oumuamua, or Scout in Hawaiian. A Harvard astronomer recently suggested that it could be some form of alien technology. And physicist Dr. Hakim Olushei wonders, could there be others like it? Oumuamua brings up the idea of alien probes coming into our solar system. If we look at rocky surfaces in our solar system, they're covered in craters. And up till now, we've assumed that those craters were due to solar system bodies. But now, perhaps, maybe some of the craters you see when you look up at the moon were created from an object outside our solar system. We don't know. Oumuamua was odd not only because of its interstellar origin, but because of its unusually long, slender shape and size. Was what Chad captured on dash cam something equally anomalous? For that, we turn to Mars mission planner Jonathan Hill. Hill begins by considering whether the light could be caused by a spacecraft or satellite. But he says this thing is moving far too quickly for that. When satellites pass by in the night sky, they usually take very arcing paths, and they usually move very slowly. That's not consistent with a, a satellite by any means. 
Could it be the re-entry of space junk into our atmosphere? Hill says the best clue is the color of the object. Each metal or compound produces a unique color when it burns. When anything on Earth explodes, you almost always get a yellow flame. But this object has a very distinct bright white blue color to it, which tells us that whatever is burning uh, is a very different compound than what we usually see in our everyday lives. Instead, says Hill, that blue is a strong indicator that the object is likely made of magnesium and definitely not man-made. So could it be an alien probe after all? I think we have to keep our minds open to the possibility that one day we may encounter artifacts from an extraterrestrial civilization that cannot be ruled out. So where do we land with this one? Hill's analysis points to a meteor made of magnesium, but no one ever found an impact crater or any part of Chad's meteor. So sure, it could have been an alien probe. That part of the story remains unresolved.